what is going on you guys welcome back to the channel if you guys have seen the last video we assembled our k24a2 bottom end rotating assembly this thing i am super stoked to get it all completed up so we can get it plopped back into the krx now i was supposed to do part two of the rebuild which is slapping the cylinder head onto the block but i don't have everything just yet i mean i have majority of everything except when i was taking the rocker assembly apart i was missing one of my little um pin that goes inside here and i'm still on a hunt for one of it it's the hollow one with the spring and that would allow me to completely assemble the rockers back onto its rods so i am waiting for uh, another guide to show up because when i bought my guides from honda i thought it was a pair but it only came as a single and i need the opposite side which is this one here it shows up tomorrow and then uh, i think the last thing that i need is the lmas they sit right here and for some reason my machine shop they gave me all of my stuff back that I accidentally left on the head but Two of my LMAs are missing. So instead of just buying two new ones, I ended up buying a whole set of brand new OEM ones. That comes in tomorrow as well. I did get my baffle from PLM a couple of days ago. PLM is actually 40 minutes north of me and this baffle actually bolts up to the uh, engine and girdle and all that and not the oil pan. This is gonna be very beneficial when we take this car back to the track. I am gonna install the oil baffle with the cylinder head in the same video when we're buttoning up this whole entire motor. But um, in today's video, we're actually gonna be working on, um, well, I'm not really gonna show you guys a full thorough of this conversion. I'm doing a dual point to multi-point conversion for one of my friends. He provided me the dual point harness here for the CRX, which has an LS swap. And he provided me a couple of harnesses to pull plugs and injectors and everything I need to complete this task. But if you guys wanna see it much more thorough, simple enough, go to the search function on YouTube, type in Young Static, DPFI to MPFI. Plenty of my videos will show up. I've covered this so many different times. I'm just gonna get right to it and just start hacking this up to get it all um, set up for the OBD1 LS engine. And in part of this video, may not be today because it's, it's a little late, but I needed to go to the junkyard with my Sawzall and cut off a chunk of a car. And we'll talk about that when we get to it. So right now, I'm gonna go ahead and set up my table, my soldering iron, bring up all my electrical boxes and get to work. All right, guys, so I finished the harness a little while ago and I was kind of helping my brother with his wagon and my cousin with his RAV4. So I pulled my, um, my Type R motor out of the corner to mock up the harness before I 100% loom it up. So right here, we have the harness pretty much stripped down, but all of the modification for the dual point to multi-point has already been done. So I'm just checking to make sure everything is reaching their home location. Now the harness is converted to full OBD-1. That means OBD-1 injectors with the correct gray plugs, the OBD-1 distributors here. On this end, we have the OBD-1 uh, injector block off for the resistor box since it doesn't use a resistor box. Uh, got this wired in right here and Coming along, we got the injectors wired up, and then this is what I was more concerned about, is making sure that the IAT, the auto air control valve, the TPS sensor is all reaching their home location, which it looks like it does really well with slack, just in case, you know, manifold setup changes or whatever the case may be. Alternators in place, oil pressure sensor down at the bottom. On this side, we have the harness going through the U-hose and we have the ground on the thermostat right there. We have the fan switch for the OBD-1 is on the thermostat. OBD-0 is actually on the back of the block and the car has an OBD-1 engine. So I rewired the fan to come all the way over here to the thermostat, that's plugged up. This junction right here, we have the OBD-1 distributor plugs. I cut off all of the OBD-0 and because he provided me the harness, I hardwired it to OBD-1 instead of having the jumper in between and then over here we have uh, ECT, engine coolant temp, 
that clips on. Uh, reverse light switch. I'm not entirely sure what transmission he's using, but I know that OBD1 and OBD2 has a different plug opposed to OBD0, which is a female and male end terminal. The OBD0 O2 sensor is going to stay, although this engine is going to need the four wire style, but that's not integrated into the harness. The four wire style is actually integrated to the ECU jumper, so he's going to have to wire that up to run an O2 sensor wherever it sits on the header. On this side right here, we have the starter cable that goes on top of the starter which is typically right here under this um what is this bottom hose outlet inlet inlet outlet inlet and then we have the harness that comes up the tower right here on the passenger side this plug right here has the four extra wire that needs to go into the ecu plugs we have the two crank wires which is the blue green and blue yellow and then we have the injectors for i believe um two and four so these need to go to the ecu needs to get modified i do have the sub harness for it right here which plugs into that plug and then this is the four wire that's going to go through the firewall to the ecu and then uh pretty much soldered into the ecu plugs before the jumper so that goes right there i mean it's super long he can cut it to length and uh so far it looks like everything goes to their home location and uh i'm about to take it all back off and loom it up now VTEC pressure, VTEC solenoid, knock sensor, O2 sensor, like I mentioned earlier, all of that is actually on the EC jumper itself. So he's going to have to do that back half when he puts it all together. But he doesn't have to worry about it because the car is non VTEC. But definitely, if he's using a stock ECU, he needs to wire up the O2 sensor. So I'm pretty much just going to go ahead and loom this all up, guys. And I already talked to my friends, I think. We're gonna be heading the yard tomorrow. I need to charge up all my sawzaws, and I need actually that's what I forgot to buy today. I was supposed to go buy sawzall blades. I'll probably do that tomorrow before I go to the yard. We're gonna do some cutting, and we'll talk more about what we're cutting and what we're doing with it when we get there tomorrow. So I'm gonna go ahead and loom that up and wrap it up for tonight. No way. Type R oil cap. Ooh. This is OEM, bro. <laughs> So this is how I get my thumbnails for my videos. Whatever it is that I'm doing, I kind of stop and find a good shot. I record it, and then when I get home, I screenshot it, give it a quick little edit, and use that as the cover. All right, well, I guess I'm taking the front lip because La Panda needs one, but I think this thing is like plastic dip or something because it is really, really thick, but it comes off really easily, and there's a bunch of double-sided tape and stuff on it, but regardless, it's a clean lip. This thing had LEDs all across the bumper. I'm not entirely sure if it's all across the car too, but um, it did have some wires for some fog lights, probably some Walmart specials or something. Um, bumper support is really clean. I don't want to buy it because it's expensive in a yard and I don't really need it, but I like having spare stuff. So um, I don't think there's anything else I'm going to take from this car. I wanted the hood, but the hood, I mean, this is really not a big deal. It's an OE hood, right? But it has this hole here, not entirely sure why it's there. But that can be smushed down, welded up, you know, grinded flat, filler, primer. But the thing is, this hood is just as thick as the rest of the car. So I peeled this off. This is a good millimeter, almost two millimeters thick of whatever layers on here. So you can see the original primer, and you can see whatever paint was on there. Then it was primer, then it was like a different metallic, like jade green looking-ish. And then there's like um, this really thick, like you can see the bottom layer, and then there's a top layer, right? So if I bought this hood, it's gonna be a pain in the butt to try and, uh, you know, flatten it down to bare metal if not the first primer but there's a hatch over here that also has an own R dot that's not an OEM hood but it is painted the same color as the car and it is really really clean you know what let's see how flush this one sits what in the what in the world is that power steering cooler that's interesting this is hard to find. I already bought two of those. OE corner lamps, huh? kind of broken. I mean, I really don't want an aftermarket hood anyways. 
and the H was upside down. Oh, huh, not shabby. This hood is kind of heavy, though. To be honest with you, I do kind of like this. Huh. I may, I may just take that. <laughs> may just take that. Uh, I'm pretty stripped on the inside. Nothing, nothing fancy here. But um, yeah. Well, not, not really too much. I'm not gonna walk the rest of the yard because I need to get going to one of my friend's shop, and I need to deliver the harness. But this thing does have a wing on it super heavy duty whale wing on it wing west wing on it i already have one of this so i don't want to buy another one you know what i mean although it will complete my two sets of wing west kit that i have currently um i'm gonna finish it picking this real quick and or probably go find the tsx real quick so guys we're still here at the crx right i kind of overlooked a lot of things because i wasn't really looking for anything in particular right but because fred was still taking off the uh, cost of bezel right there which he just finished i uh, was kind of looking at the rest of the car and i realized that this thing has a really clean headliner if you guys haven't seen the norcal CX owners meet i kind of talked about tony crx which was fully repainted the uh, original white and i had sold him a zc roof cut which gets rid of the the sunroof right and I didn't have a headliner for him. So I was like, all right, well, let me call Tony. Tony says he needs it. We're gonna be pulling this. Now, while Fred was taking off the bezel, I realized that the climate control is not broken. Look at that. Look at that. Oh my God, that is a treasure for us CRX owners. I'm most definitely gonna take that out very, very carefully and prevent it from breaking but also when i was sitting right here i noticed that there were clips on the door trim and there is no aftermarket window visors that has clips they're all double-sided tape and i saw this piece right here which was sitting right here has the purple tint plastic still attached to it so this car had to have oem window visors I'm almost certain because I don't if you guys know there's another aftermarket company that has clips for window visors let me know because I don't think there's one and I'm almost certain this car had OEM window visors although it's gone guys this is why we switch over to the Honda Accord right this thing in place was perfectly fine but as soon as I took off the screw it fell apart but the thing is if I can just grab every little piece from it I can always glue it back not a big deal right but We'll see right now if I can get all of this out in the pieces that it broke and not further. Because I'll still take it. Especially for the mixer for the Honda Accords. So we got the headliner, front lip. I got the visors, the rear map light, front seatbelt um, indicator, glove box. This right here is a rear visor. If you guys remember the Flipper X CRX, we had this on there too and I sold it with the car. So I figured, you know what? if it's not that expensive let's just buy it too um we already kind of put the car back together we I mean, threw the bumper back on took it off for the lip the interior uh fred took what he took i already got a couple of those i was gonna buy it uh carpet's really clean but i just bought the carpet from the other junkyard a little while ago so i have that as a spare for the red car and i'm leaving the wing as much as i want i'm gonna leave the wing there and i mean most of the body kit's already broken but um again for the third time let's go find a tsx real quick and then back to the first crx so i decided to take the mirrors and not the glove box because the mirrors on the giveaway car is painted really thick white and this is factory so this would be a lot cleaner to refresh now let's get out of here so this is a tsx right here just so happened to have the engine still in it although it just kind of been exposed to the weather and it's all rusted on the inside it was a um manual transmission and somebody took all of that already but I am really here for um, the rocker assembly. Not really the assembly, but the pins on the inside. So when I set my cylinder head off to go get um, rebuilt, I took the whole entire rocker assembly valve train out and I didn't. it didn't occur to me that this thing separates. So when it separated, I lost some of the pins and I really can't assemble my head, which I've mentioned in the previous videos of you know the rebuild of the 24 that I can't really complete it because I need the pins to put the valve train back to put the cylinder you know head on and the cams and all that so lucky for me this TSX still has its motor in here and 
I am after pretty much all the pins or a couple of them just to have a spare. So I'm gonna go ahead and just knock these off real quick. All right, so I ended up taking a couple of these. I was gonna pull the whole rocker arm off, but then I realized I could just flip it up and you know pop them out. So got a couple of these um, as spares, but now let's get to the CRX. So the three other guys I met earlier, they pulled the engine out, they took the transmission and pretty much cleared up the firewall for me to cut out the sections that I need. Now this thing didn't have a dashboard and I just ripped out the pedal assembly, which is good and I'm trying to find myself to not buy it, but took off all the heater core uh, hose, not core, but the heater uh, vents and stuff to have access back here. Now the section that I need is not much. I just pretty much need um, where the clutch pedal sat, which is, this section of the firewall so I gotta remember to cut around the grommet and then um, after the booster holes which is these so just the little square section is what I'm shooting for first I got to find a way to start the cut I think I'm just gonna go from the top and just kind of go around everything so set you guys up real quick This right here is what son needed and i just facetimed him verified that's the section we need right so we're about to take off and then i realized that this is a 9091 dx hf headliner where it has the seat belt um indicator on the top where 8889 which is what tony car is doesn't have that so because this one's still here and it's very clean i'm gonna pull this one off as well too so uh i'm gonna pull this then pay and get on out of here so this is new to me guys. I've never had a CRX that has a key that works in the back. Wow. <laughs> so Fred is the one that I went to the junkyard with today and is on their court. He was also the guy who picked me up from the airport when I came back from Florida. And I might've shown in one of the uh, Higgins 89 hatch build videos that um, Fred pulled up in the Samurai. This thing right here, pretty sick, pretty done up. Yeah, I said it. Samurai. Look at this. Super done up, right? Um, he also kind of pulled up in his 1200. I think I've shown the blue one, but I've never shown you guys his orange ones. This one right here, he's planning to do a uh, K-swap all-wheel drive. Not entirely sure how he's going to go about it yet. He already started taking it apart to kind of get an idea, but he does have this CRX that's sitting in the back that is actually stripped down, but he was thinking about measuring like pretty much all of the engine base space the wheel base to see what he can squeeze here into that chassis to make it much simpler as far as um you know drive train and suspension goes but he has a lot of plans with the k swap for this one he already has the k that he bought from my buddy brian and i know he's going to do something with it soon he did just buy his welding machine so fred better get down to work but um anyways fred is grabbing me a lip right now before i take off because the one i got from the junkyard is in rough shape the one that he has is very mint and it's for La Ponda because she's kind of bare naked in the front. So I got home a little while ago when we got to Fred's house. We were just hanging out and eating our hot dogs that we bought um, at Dog House. You guys already know if I'm out that neck of the wood, I'm always grabbing a hot dog or a burrito from the fire truck. So we're just kind of hanging out, talking, chopping it up. Thank you, Fred, for coming out with me. Thank you for driving to the uh, pick and pull because my mom took the van today and definitely did not want to take La Panda there. So let me show you guys the stuff that I picked up and what I paid for it. Where's my receipt at? So at the end of the day, I spent $207, right? It's really just like $5 here, $5 there, $10 there, $15 there, so on and so forth. And I think the most that I spent today was on the heater control unit which is this broken hunk of junk. So the reason why I bought this, even though it shattered when I took it apart is because of all of the plugs, boards, mixer, and all of that. CRX owner, if you guys don't know, there is a guy who made 3D replacement uh, like casings. And I can take all of this gut out and swap it into the new casing and I'll have a really 
I mean, practically a brand new heater control unit. So I bought it, 37 bucks, whatever. Um, I picked up the seatbelt indicator for this car. I picked up the map light for this car. Picked up the sun visors for La Ponda because that thing is super crusty. Although this is gray and that's blue, I'm, I don't care. We bought the AC delete duct, the AC bypass duct. This right here, um, I can resell this and make some good money off of it. Does not have the broken tabs. I made sure of that. I do have the hardware with it. I do have like three of these in my tote in the backyard. Um, rear hatch visor. I had this on my Flipperex CRX and I, I didn't want to take it off because I was afraid to break it. I think uh, Stevie has it on his CRX and I figured, you know what? It's only about, I think I paid, I paid, bug shield 15 bucks so 15 dollars for this just got to clean it up and put some new adhesive on it and that i don't know what car i'm gonna throw it on. i'm probably gonna throw it on my krx because i kind of like this and i am waiting for the um rain guards to be available on the dude's website that sells the car covers i forgot his name but uh when he has them available i am going to cop me some window visors but i got the headliner for tony Thank God I caught the 9091 style versus the 8089. Tony's car is an 89, so I grabbed that. I do have all of the visor, like, um, visor stays and whatever. I don't, I don't know what the terminology is for that. Uh, mirror cover for the 889 that doesn't have the seatbelt indicator and pretty much all of the hardware that goes with that. I don't know if he has it, but I saved all of this anyways for him. This is the front lip I got off that CRX. And then this is the front lip that Fred gave me. Fred doesn't have a USD in front on his car anymore. So he gave me this to put onto La Panda. I am going to scuff it up. I am going to flat it out so I can match the rest of the car. So I'm going to throw that on a different day. Climb control. This right here is the CRX mirrors from the black one. And the reason why I got this is because it is raw. And this does not take much to either restore or less effort to prep and paint a fresh coat of black. Now, the reason why I bought these is because, like I've mentioned, the original one to the giveaway car, which is not even on the car yet, it's painted white and it's thick. It's really thick. And I don't want to sit there and try to sand every little bit of this off just to give it a nice coat of black to, you know, make it look good so instead i just bought some black ones already this is a bezel cover for the 9091 this is fred's version one for the s2k cluster he made a custom bezel i don't know if you guys can see this but he made a custom bezel he didn't like it uh because he missed a spot down there right and he ended up making version two which looks pretty good he made version three which looks even better so he gave me this one because when I put the KRX motor back together and I throw it back into the KRX, I'm not going to use a Type-S transmission. I'm going to use the Z3 transmission, which has the magnetic speed sensor, which in return, you need to do an electronic VSS cluster, EG, DC, EK, S2K. So I might do an S2K cluster. I'm not entirely sure yet, but shout out to Fred for that because that is something I can definitely work with since it's already modified so we're worried about that later i did get the rocker pins i got a couple of them so that's in here already cleaning and uh in part of that i went to the parts store to go grab my timing chain guide and it showed that they didn't receive it which is kind of frustrating because i need it for tomorrow's head installation for the block but I don't have it. So I'm gonna have to go there tomorrow morning and check to see if they receive this so I can get it to make that video. Now, the last thing I got is this piece right here. So this piece is the firewall piece that um, I was actually there for. I had to cut this out as close to the um, frame rail and tower as possible because I needed this entire section for a cable to hydro conversion. I'm not going to go deep into details with this just yet. I know you guys have seen the brackets for the pedal assembly to go uh, cable to hydro. And then the master and lines and all that stuff is underneath the dashboard. You sacrifice the heater, vent tube, and you know the way that S1 is going to be building this, you're not going to touch anything under the dashboard. I'm not going to shed too much light on it, guys. You're going to have to follow S1 built on Instagram and also S1 built on YouTube. They cover pretty much all of their products they have in stock and also all the products in production. So if you guys want to stick around and see what well, all is going to go into this, be sure to follow them. All the links will be in the description below. So my buddy's going to be picking up the harness tonight so he can get going on that project that he was working on. 
and uh, I loomed this up all last night. Everything's ready to rock and roll. I made this hub harness that goes to the ECU all loomed up as well. I wanted to make it as stock as possible because that's what he requested. And like I said, this thing is ready to rock and roll. He just got to do the ECU portion at the passenger footwell and hopefully the harness works great. Oh, and one more thing before I close this video out. I went to the PO box and I got this Amazon package. And when I pulled it out of my box, it was actually open and it turns out that there's nothing in here this is a separate one but the only thing that was in this package is a note so the note here says i know how important the 17 millimeter is for the imports nice to have a spare from giz motorsports aka garrett garrett i truly appreciate you sending this over although it did not make it to me it's very unfortunate but um <laughs> i am still missing my 17 and i can't seem to find it but thank you garrett for sending that 17 mil over hopefully whoever finds it can make use of it and um the other package is not a package it's it's an envelope and let's open this one up Static, huge fan of the channel and have been subscribed for a while now. It's been great to follow your channel. You got one of the best knowledgeable car YouTubers in the field. I've been on since that gold wagon. Damn, that's that's a little while ago, man. Thank you. Just an idea, but it would be tight if you could do a budget-minded build mod of an older vehicle, kind of like the one Fred got. I think you got the fabrication skills, auto body paint understanding, and patience to get something like that done. Regardless of what you work on, though, it always come out looking great. I don't have anything much to send, so I can send some stickers I got from Go Power Sports. I might find something else. Just wanted to show support, man. Take care. Tiger Musky dash vibes. Yo, I appreciate it. Anything, even just a simple mail to the PO box, man. I truly appreciate the support. It's a coincidence that I read this mail in this video because I did kind of talk about Fred's 1200 cc's before leaving his place. He wants to do a K all-wheel drive setup in one of those and I've been trying to like give Fred the oomph to get going on the project so we can like really tackle it and you know maybe it is something worth to put on the channel if he's willing to share but it's mainly on his time so I definitely want to show something like that pretty cool on the channel um if you guys also don't know john who gave me the giveaway crx a couple of years ago he has a mini cooper really old mini cooper with a b16 swap it has a little rust on it john wants me to swap the b16 all the b series stuff into his older newer chassis that doesn't have all the rust and he wants me to do all the work now granted a lot of the things going on here at the house i told him I'd probably take in the job when I have the space and the time to do it. And he said in return, he'll give me the Mini Cooper, the old one, that's already B-swapped for the work. So if you guys want to see some B-swap Mini Cooper stuff, let me know in the comments below. Because I think it'll be a pretty cool project, but because of how everything's going on, I'm really pushing to get things done and get the ball rolling so we can start bringing the different stuff I talked about earlier this year. So. That is going to wrap it up for this video. If you guys enjoyed this video a little bit, a little bit of the junkyard, a little bit of dual point, multi point conversion, be sure to leave a thumbs up. And if you guys want to stick around for all of the other things that I have planned here, I can't just spit all of them all at once because my day goes as it goes. If you guys want to stick around and see what's next, be sure to hit the subscribe button. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.